Hi there. Welcome back to my channel. Again, it's been a long time. I'm going to talk real fast. Keep up because I don't like all this yakety yak in front of all these videos, but I want you to understand what I've done. My last video was about how to be a visual merchandiser and the ins and outs and where to stay and how to save money. Well, my thought process on the way home from that trip actually was to take our our minivan that we had and turn it into a camper van. It's a really hot ticket item that people are doing right now. And I bought all the stuff and we did it. We put solar on it. I mean, I we did it. We decked it out. Um, it took us about three weeks of solid work and I took it out and I, I, I camped in it for a solid month or more. Um, you know, a good 10, 12 nights in it um, just to see if I liked it and if I could manage it. And I, and I tell you, I really did enjoy it. I mean, I made the blackouts for the window, made blackout curtains. We bought... Uh, uh, the little generator and the solar panels, the whole nine yards. We, and my husband put the little, where we plug, plug it into shore power, put a bed in it. it. I really enjoyed it. I really did. My problem is, you know, I'm in my 60s. Crawling around in a van is not something that I've decided I really want to do. It was fine as long as the weather's nice. But when you got to close those doors, or you're closing at night, and you got to get something out from underneath the bed, and you got to crawl around on, your, on the hands and knees. Man, my other issue was I had a couple of nights. It was really hot. I mean, this summer just extended on into October. Um, I had a couple of nights. And, and I should have known this down on the Gulf Coast that it was in the 80s. And it was raining and muggy and hot. Anyway, I ended up staying in a hotel one night. I was so uncomfortable. I, I mean, I stayed out as long as I could in the stores. But even just to go back and try to sleep, I was miserable. And I'm thinking, ah, okay, I did it. I do like doing it and I enjoyed it. I just can't, I needed more. So I was on a search for a motorhome. I've been looking for one for a couple of years. And my problem is if I can find one with low enough miles and I could afford it. But then, you know, low miles, older model, you know, those have been sitting up for a long time. You're just bargaining for trouble. And the same thing when you found a one that was a little older with more miles, again, you got somebody that's been running it pretty hard if they've got a lot of miles on it. My remedy was, and I found uh, some units from Cruise America, which they're a rental company that rent out RVs from truck campers all the way to 28 footers. And they'll yank them out of service when they reach over 100,000 miles and they'll refurb them. They repaint them, they go through them. You have warranty that comes with them or you can and purchase uh, warranties with them. We opted for the four year coach and the four year um, I forget what it's called, drivetrain, motor, you know, the actual chassis part. And we we did purchase the extended warranty um, because I'm out in it by myself and I plan on using it a lot. I, I mean, it just made sense. The cost was very doable. I mean, we were thinking about buying maybe a truck and a fifth wheel or a truck and a camper and the cost of buying just the RV really trumped the price of that. Um, as far as being more economical as far as cost. Um, and the fact that our, the Cruise America fleet, when they're running these units, they're maintained. They're on a schedule maintenance program. So they've been maintained even though they've got a lot of miles on them. And then you think, well, you know, these renters, they're rough on these units. And I'm sure that's true somewhat, but I did find out they have to pay a pretty sizable deposit. And if there's any damage at all, they don't get that deposit back. So... Yeah, they're a little more careful about um, how they handle it. Um, Cruise America doesn't have ladders. They're not allowed on the roof. If you have a flat, you can't just call anybody. You have to call them. They have their own companies that come, or they'll contract to come out and change the tire. So, yeah, they're pretty picky about it. They won't. They wouldn't let the renters do any kind of maintenance work on it. Now, we've, we went out and we bought a unit uh, back the 1st of November. And I have, I have been... I have driven this thing enough, so we did buy it. I'm in it now, and I want to show you around. Um, I wanted to do this when we first got it, and I thought, yeah, I just want to wait and see and kind of find out the, the ins and outs and the quirks and the things that nobody told you about, you know, as a solo female. And my husband and I went to Phoenix. We bought it. It was out of Phoenix, and they Cruise America pays you $300 on your plane ticket. That was a pretty sweet deal. Flew out there, picked it up. The transition was amazingly smooth. Um, the whole process was just unbelievably awesome through Cruise America. Just throwing that out there. Uh, talk to Dave. Call Dave if you want to know anything. 
tell him I sent you because he'll remember. Um, he just was a super awesome guy. Helped us with all of our questions. We financed it through a company through Cruise America. Again, easy process. Very, very doable. Um, so anyway, we drove it back. It didn't have any problems. Now, we had an RV when the kids were small. So we're not new to the RV world or camping. So I kind of knew what I was getting into. But again... I don't want to talk about this too much. What I want to do is be the person that shows you around the unit. And if you're interested in buying one or have bought one and want to know these few little things that nobody else has talked about, or, you know, at least I feel like I can share what I've done, the changes we've made, the things we found out. Um, now we have, we took out the jump seat and I did, I've already posted on, on, a, on Facebook on a little page about how we took that jump seat out. It was worthless. It was just taking up space did that um i did a little bit of accent you know work in here i put up this curtain behind me that's pretty typical of these units that people do um added a television now i was out in it last week and the temperature i was out in texas the temperature got down to 19 degrees now you know i watched the videos on how to winterize it or how to put the antifreeze down in the sinks and things did all that um I went to bed that night. I ran, I had the house unit on, plus I had a little uh, heater on in here. My line still froze in here. The, the actual coach lines froze. And I'll show you why in a minute. And I, what I did the next night is I, I had emptied out my gray and my black water tank and I had put the antifreeze down in the drains. And so I had done that, but I didn't want to turn on the water pump and leave it on all night in case things froze, but I had to. The next night, I let the faucets in the kitchen and the bathroom just drip, and I left the water pump on. <laughs> now, what happened was all night, you could hear drip, 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 and the water pump would go, you know, every 15, 20 minutes because the pressure was being released from the, the drip in the sinks, but they didn't freeze, and it got down that, that cold again. So we isolated where the outside lines were, and my husband wrapped them. Uh, and you have to kind of do a little, I'll show you underneath this seat here. You have to kind of find where all that is. Um, again, we, uh, we put in a backup camera through an Apple CarPlay. We put in the dash. I'll put the links to the, the unit that we got. And if you're comfortable yanking the dash out, you can pay somebody to do it. Um, it's That was awesome. I had an Apple CarPlay in my car, and to have that and be hands-free, which these units only come with just a standard radio with a CD player. That's how you get. There's no frills. There's no slides. There's no levelers. You know, all of that is not important to me, but I did need to be hands-free. Um, this is a bigger, I mean, it's a unit. And you have to, you have to pay attention. I don't drive over the speed limit. I mean, and I don't usually drive over 65. That's the recommendation for any motor home is you don't drive over 65. Um, it takes a little getting used to, but man, now I can whip this thing in and out of a parking lot or drive it, not even think about it. Now, windy days is a little bit of a different story. But let me get back to what I was, my main topic is, is to show you guys the things that we've done to make changes. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is kind of give you a little virtual tour. This is when you come in the door. Now, I'm doing this at night, so I don't have all that outside glare coming in. I actually made these little accents for the curtains. I didn't, these are the original curtains from Cruise America. This is the jump seat I was talking about. It was right here as you come in the door. And like I said, we've I made a, a couple of pictures. I'm going to insert how we did that. It wasn't as hard as we thought. I bought this little four drawer compartment at Walmart. It is just handy dandy. My husband made these little things so when I travel, I can shut them. And uh, doesn't the doors don't slide out? He actually was able to put in the um, turn it back on the little floor lights that came off the side of it, so you can have little courtesy lights on the steps. The bunk up here is where I normally sleep, and I have an electric blanket, and there's my pillows, and then over here I have some little baskets that are got some Velcro on the bottom so they don't slide, and I, I have. Um, what they call fairy lights. Let me turn them on. They're kind of nice. They kind of keep that little area lit up at night when I crawl up there to sleep and can read a book. My husband installed a television. 
this is a um, three inch foam mattress that we will put out when we're um, on the you know we make the dinette down and this is the dinette down here it's plenty room I, I really spend most of my time sitting here doing computer work and I can watch the television it's directly behind me when I have it pulled out and again I made the little accents for the curtains and those are the original curtains you know the upper cabinets installed a clock and I've got an outdoor thermometer with a indoor thermometer just can I can pull off and down the um, most people you know when you're here and you want to change clothes to climb up in the bathroom is pretty small which is right here turn the light on um, you know and I put the little wooden platform down here so when after you shower this it's hard to get that water out of there so you're stepping in water so the little little platform down here works really good I got that on Amazon um, I hung up you know some velcro things the little sink the medicine cabinet I did put install a little handle here not you know and I know these are not real safe to like pull up on but just to kind of help when you get over you have to step over this threshold down here and it gets a little bit hairy sometimes in the medicine cabinet I installed the uh, the velcro strips that you can put these on so they'll all stay in place you know underneath there and they, and they can come out they, but everything when I open the door everything stays you know that I just hung over and I hung it on a, another one of those strips you put up and I have my hand soap back there behind the uh, shower thing so it doesn't fall after you know when we travel um, again I hung up a little velcro thing over there to hang my squeegee and my toilet brush nothing special you know we hung up a, a mirror here so this little area is where I put on my makeup and I change my clothes and what I do is I reinstall this little curtain let me show you it's hung on a tension rod you know and we just pull it close and now you are just in the kitchen you the wind is blowing I can hear it um, in the kitchen and this is my kitchen I installed this um, just to kind of keep things in place you know that'll ride my coffee pot I do stow that away when we're traveling along with that little uh, hot pad there and I've got a chopping block or cutting board I should call it it goes over my stove and when I need it I can extend it over here on top of the sink and then I've got more more work area um, so you know these I got off of Amazon I saw other people on their sites have them I really do like them and they really ride well here and that's just put on with the adhesive that comes with the kit the only problem I have is there's a lot of humidity in here and you'll notice it gets it's stuck in there and you have to kind of whack it a few times to knock it loose to be able to use it you know we have a nice large closet here I'm really happy about that so the things I wanted to show you are things like this okay so I was in here and I was running the coffee pot and my little heater and all of a sudden I threw a breaker somewhere didn't know where it was didn't know how to fix it well you know you just don't notice this stuff until you need it so right down here is the converter panel but it's also the fuse panel to your house stuff you see that this is the one that it gets thrown you'll hear it go click and you know it's been thrown so all you have to do is just reset it make sure you turn off your extra things that you were heating up really can't you know kind of like in your house you can't overload your um, circuits or they will not work and in this unit you can't run that coffee pot <laughs> And the little space little ceramic space heater I had running in here the other thing that happens is you have a GFR you know, on uh, just like your house has the the plugs with I believe it's called GFR and it, that resets right down here there is a little button that you can push to reset it that took a little ingenuity and know how to where to find it but once you know where it is no problem there's also another one I spotted 
on this plug above the light fixture. There's one there also. So that's something that's handy to know. Um, so when it's really cold, this runs your heater and you'll just push it until you hear it click. And once you hear it click, the furnace starts to blow right here. Blows cold for just a little bit and then you'll hear the propane turn on. And what I did at night is I would turn it on and then I would let the unit heat up. I would turn it until it I heard it click off and then I would just scoot it down a little bit more. So that way it didn't get so cold at night. I had electric blankets up there so I didn't need to run the heat full blast all night long. I just didn't want it to all get right, too so cold. so back here I keep a TV tray because sometimes when you make this down into a bed and you're relaxing so you're tired of sleeping up here. Sometimes my, my legs cramp at night. I don't I don't want to sleep up there. When I'll sleep down here and I'll make this into the bed. Well, I had anywhere to put my drinks or my clock or my watch or anything else for the night or my phone. So I'll put it down here. Now underneath these seats, underneath this one, is where your power comes into the coach and it's dispersed out. Over here under this one, is your fresh water tank and all of your water lines that come into the coach from the outside. I put this towel here because I step up here to step up there to get up here. So just to keep it clean I keep a, just an old towel right here. Now what I'm going to do is show you what's underneath this table and underneath both of these Once benches. you remove your cushions You'll have this board now and I'm sure because it was a rental unit and they didn't want people messing with anything they had a ton of screws in this thing so we took the screws out so we could have access to this whenever we wanted to all right so this is what you'll find underneath the right hand seat this is your fresh water tank we're gonna need to I need to scrub this up a little bit um, that white pipe right there is the post that goes to your table leg right there. When you take your table down, it goes in this little hole right here. The little cap on it, it slides up in there and it just stows in that piece of PVC pipe is all. It is at the end, it is uh, uh, covered. I do worry about um, having critters get in underneath here and then climbing through that pipe and into the coach. But it is, it is, I checked, it is covered at the end. Now what you'll see here, that pipe, that white pipe right there is actually the fill tube to your fresh water tank. The clear tube appears to be um, the air line that keeps it from, you know, like in your house you have to have the, the line that goes to the roof so you can have water. Um, I don't know, there's something about the suction in the water, it's kind of like putting your finger on a straw. Now. The blue line is the line that carries the water throughout the coach. Whether it be from your fresh water tank, this guy right here, or through the outside line that you're hooked to, which that is the, the piece that my husband's got the um, foam on. That's the one that you hook up with a water hose outside your shore water. He, um, in the meantime, he's covered all of these lines with um, insulation. Now, what we did find, and we needed to know, you see that red handle right down there? If you decide you want to drain your fresh water tank, your onboard fresh water tank, you turn that knob and it drains it completely. Now, unless you take all of this apart, you can't get to it. And we found that just on accident. But that's what that white line is down that white pipe down there that is uh it drains out underneath the coach just freely so when you turn it be prepared to have water outside wherever you are it's just fresh water so it's usually fine so there you go and that is the water pump and all the electrical stuff that hooks up to that but i found all that very interesting and they don't show that in a lot of videos okay so this is the left hand side of the dinette. Now I, f I failed to mention that these slits back here, those are where the actual seat belts come up and um, live underneath the cushion. 
but because we don't have anybody that travels with us and we may take our granddaughter occasionally we'll have to put a car seat here but it's just a matter of taking this apart and pulling them out um i pushed them back down in there because i feel like with them underneath this seat all the time that um it, it wears on the cushion so i just pushed them back down there and again this thing was like screwed in everywhere and again I, I feel like they did that so renters would not feel the need to you know open this up so now this side's really dirty and we plan on you know cleaning this up a little bit better so there you see the blue line there that is the uh the water line that runs along this wall and i'm going to show you in a minute where that is like i said this is really filthy and i'm plan on getting the vacuum in here and clean it out you have your seat belt anchors there but this is the uh, actual coach where all the power comes into the coach right there and I believe that is the the tire well on the outside but anyway just anybody curious that's where all that is oh and if you look behind that you see that blue line that that's the back of the shower so that line runs underneath this seat and comes up there to the shower. That's one of the lines. Okay, remember me telling you about the bump out that we discovered had the water lines that were exposed right next to the outside of the coach? It is that right back there between the back, underneath the table, that little bump out right there. When he took that piece of angle round off of that, those are just the, there was, water line right there exposed right next to the outer wall and I'm pretty sure that's where my water froze so he took the uh the gray pipe insulator and put it on the pipes that ran through there now we back up this is the uh I'm sorry I was thinking that was the uh solar but it's not that's the carbon monoxide detector duh and also the other thing that we did is this table kept bouncing up and down when we traveled. So he put a piece of a little angle thing there with holes in it and one down here. And we just put a bungee on it. Keeps it tight. And all we have to do is remember to take it off when we decide to break it down into the bed. So the other thing I bought it was this hanging rack right here. You know, keep my fly swatter. A little duster thing some flashlights a couple of jackets my raincoat and my umbrella right there and it just sits right there where it's real convenient I'm trying to think what else i did okay in the refrigerator i did order one of these tension these i put this like if i have stuff that's glass and i make i want to make sure it stays in there while we travel when you open the door it doesn't fall out that's worked really well too those are easy to find on Amazon. I'll put a link. I put up this bar, this magnetic bar. All of this rides no problem up there. I don't have any issues with that. The uh, mini blind I installed relatively easily. It's just a small one. I got it from, it was like the cheapest one they make at Lowe's. The, the sad thing is that these windows are frosted. And when you back into a campsite overlooking a lake, you can't see anything. But at night when I'm in here and I'm working, I just, I, I feel a little more comfortable with this being closed. Even though it's frosted, I think you can still see enough shadows. It makes me uncomfortable. The uh, level tester and all that's up here. As you can see right now, here we're good to go on everything. Everything's empty. It shows your battery hours. The generator starts with this. We started it today just to make sure this is your hot water heater. It takes about mm, between 10 to 15 minutes for it to get hot enough for you to actually use it for, let's say, a shower. And as I was saying, there is a small solar panel on the roof. And I think it's a trickle charge to keep your batteries charged. So that's a pretty cool thing. My husband discovered it. We kept seeing this and we kept seeing the light on, but we didn't know where the... You know, he glanced on the roof one day and didn't see anything, but he got a little higher up and he spotted it on top of the air conditioner unit. And I'll, I'll, I'll insert it. The blackout curtains that came with this unit were kind of diddly, and they didn't go all the way down. Now, we do have a cover on the windshield, 
but I don't like putting that on and off all the time. So I took, I had made these for my camper van. See the blackout on the back? I took a pair of curtains and I just made, I made it, I, and then I took a pair of blackout curtains and just made it into one. Um, and they just, I, these clip, I use these clips in the middle here and they go all the way to the floor. And what I did is I put them on a shower rod and that shower rod fits right, let me show you, it pops right out from behind that cushion and it works out great. You see right there? That's the end of the shower rod. And what I do, and it doesn't, it doesn't bother getting up and down on the bed. And what I do is I'll close it and then I just mash it right back down in there. It fits like a glove, like it, like it should. So and then in the daytime when I'm traveling, I just pull them back and then, you know, put the tie back on there. And that worked out really, really well. I mean, it's not beautiful, but it's functional. And you can't see through it. See? Dark. I wanted to share this with you. I, when I was uh, living in the van on my trips, I got this EcoFlow unit, which is a, it's like a little generator. It's a little portable power station. I believe this is the 500 watt. I'll have to go back and look. But I'm going to tell you, this thing is awesome. Guys, you have no idea how much this saves me. Even in here, so it wasn't wasted just that I, you know, since I bought it for the van. It will power, I'll turn it on. Say if I'm in a store working and I want to come out and, and heat up something for lunch, you know, you really have to turn on the generator to run the microwave or to even heat up anything um, other than propane, you know, like I have that, uh, the little egg cooker and the little soup maker, and I just plug those in here, and they work just fine. You can also charge your phones. You can plug in the electric blanket here at night. You know, you volt charger. Oh, it goes this way. Um, 12 volt charger there. It has an emergency light, and not only does it have all of that, it has uh, three plugs on the side right there and this thing will charge very quickly now I checked into the Jackeries they take a long time to charge I can plug this in when it's down to like 30 percent and within an hour and a half it's back up to 100 percent and I just don't have any problems with it at all it's awesome now what I did do also, let me turn this flashlight off, is I bought the solar panel, this brand, to go with it. And it was a little bit, I had to order an extra adapter for it to work. It didn't come with a proper adapter, but it's doable and I can put those in my description. But this folds out and you can just lay it outside on the picnic table along with your unit and it'll charge it back up if you have, say you don't have power or you're somewhere and the power goes out. I mean, that happens not only at home, it happens when you're camping. So, there's that. So that's pretty much everything that I can think of inside the coach that we've done. <laughs> My hair's crazy. Um, I did buy a hitch mount storage holder sort of thing, and I'll, I'll, I'll put that link in, in the description also. It's been real handy. I keep all of my sewer hoses and the leveling blocks and all that in there. When I need to carry extra waters, if it's not freezing, I'll keep them in a container out there. It holds two of those totes just right. Um, and I bought a vinyl zippered cover and this worked out fine. Um, um, we did put a, dis a quick disconnect on the water, like for the hose, so you don't have to screw it in, unscrew it. On the filter, on the hose. Um, that worked out a lot. That's just, this makes life a little bit easier. And they're not that expensive. You can pick them up at Lowe's. The quick, it's like a brass fitting. That's made my life a lot easier instead of in the cold having to unscrew and screw stuff back on. And I think that's about it. I hope this has been helpful. 
please like and subscribe. I have a whole bunch of stuff. I am into everything and I do everything. So I really appreciate the comments. I, I don't mind the negative comments. I, I, I appreciate them. Um, if you have something you want to add, please do. Um, anyway, enjoy. And until the next time.